Hey YouTube, welcome back. Thanks for watching. It seems that my long-held belief that the left is particularly dangerous because they seem capable of rationalizing just about anything was well-founded. And now, inevitably, they're convincing themselves that jailing journalists who say things they don't agree with is perfectly acceptable in their version of democracy. Uh, do you think the Murdoch family in charge of Fox will ever pull the plug on Tucker? What do you think? There is a point at which it becomes difficult for an executive to put up with the help. Uh, in this particular case, Tucker has been screaming fire in a crowded movie house for years. Bullshit. Okay, so wait, you're on national TV and you're making serious allegations about a journalist in order to justify your insane argument for arresting that journalist and you don't have a single example or shred of evidence to back that up? Seriously, folks, at no point during this hack's many appearances throughout the Democrat state media has he presented or even been asked to present a single example of anything Tucker Carlson has said that would justify jailing him. Unless Tucker told his audience to go out and commit violence, then he's not responsible for the warped, twisted thoughts of a psychopathic maniac. I seem to remember a certain domestic terrorist attack against GOP senators that was done by a Democrat Bernie supporter who was incited by rhetoric from his party and their media. Were any of them ever held to this standard? Here's a question for the comment section. If Tucker Carlson were somehow held responsible, would Carl Cameron, Jim Acosta, and Joe Biden apply these same standards to other journalists? How about Democrat politicians? Let me know what you think in the comments. And that cliche uh, really comes to the matter of what is free speech. And the fact of the matter is, if you disturb the peace by starting a riot in a movie theater, cops are going to arrest you and you might end up in jail or you might end up in something worse. Uh, and that kind of stuff absolutely has to stop. Uh, whether it's the antitrust bill to take down and deplatform people who lie and put out falsehoods that cause damage and violent, violent hate. Again, what lies, what falsehoods that led to violent hate? I'm just blown away that he's making these insanely serious allegations, but intentionally being vague about it. See, if I were in Cameron's position and making these accusations about, say, CNN, I'd be ready with examples of them spreading lies and falsehoods that could be legitimately blamed on inciting hate and riots. This, for example, was a myth spread by CNN and others, which led to riots by people who felt they were justified. Kenosha is another example of CNN and others omitting details and playing up the racial narrative that was totally false, once again, leading to riots. Or once CNN joined Democrats and called ICE facilities concentration camps, leading to multiple attacks on ICE facilities. The fact that Cameron has no examples or evidence of any of the things that he's accusing Tucker Carlson of should tell you that he's full of shit, which he is. Uh, there ought to be something done about it. And the, the administration is beginning to actually make a move on that. And it's been way overdue. And we have to remember that a good portion of what people read is coming from folks who aren't Americans pretending to be Americans in order to gaslight them even worse. There you have it. The most absurd moment of the week. A paid hack who is literally in the process of gaslighting all of us, warning us about gaslighting. I don't get it. Every single thing he just said there is off the charts disturbing. He wants Joe Biden to use force against journalists who also just happen to be his biggest critics and also coincidentally the biggest business competitors to CNN, MSNBC and the rest. And these are the very same people who constantly warn that Donald Trump was a threat to democracy because he called them an enemy of the people. The president with his back up against the wall is saying journalists are dangerous, sick, enemies of the people. That's where we are. This is America. Let me show you a few of the reactions from journalists this morning. Chuck Todd calling this outrageous. He's saying here he tries not to take the bait, but this time he's reacting in the hopes that rational folks realize this is wrong and dangerous. Bill Kristol, an outspoken Trump critic, says the president sounds closer in spirit to Vladimir Putin than America. More and more, I think hate movement is the proper term for what's going on. And that cliche uh, really comes to the matter of what is free speech? And the fact of the matter is, if you disturb the peace by starting a riot in a movie theater, 
cops are going to arrest you and you might end up in jail or you might end up in something worse. Uh, there ought to be something done about it. And the, the administration is beginning to actually make a move on that. And it's been way overdue. Isn't it just a hot, sticky load of democracy all over the walls? All right, everyone, it's nice outside and I don't need to see no more shit. Hit that like button, share and subscribe. Then leave a comment to let us all know what you think. Thanks for watching. <coughs>